All right, welcome everyone. So we'll continue our idea and our study of the informed search and the A-star algorithm. Let's dive right into it. So what we have covered in the past is the A-star. It's a brand new algorithm. And what it does it is it essentially combines UCS and greedy algorithms. UCS, which is an algorithm that that's kind of like BFS, it orders the nodes by the path cost or the backward cost the cost from the starting node to the current node. Uh, that's the, the UCS algorithm. And the greedy algorithm, which simply orders by the goal proximity, says whichever node is, seems to be, is perceived to be closest to the goal node, that's the one we'll take. And that's what greedy does. And what A star, which is a fabulous algorithm, what it does, it, it simply orders by the sum, f of n is equal to g of n plus h of n. And like we studied in the past, why is this a good strategy? It's a great strategy because it does take into account what it finds at the distance from the from the starting node, the G of N, but it also uses the concept of information or the heuristic into account. And like we mentioned in the past, the design of heuristics is a key consideration. That's the main focus of study here. So today, the key idea that we want to study is admissibility of heuristics, and we will define what that is, uh, what that's called. So a heuristic H, and that's the heuristic, the one that's used by the greedy algorithm, the heuristic H, which is an estimate of the distance from the current node to the goal state, to the goal node. The heuristic H is admissible. In other words, it's optimistic. If it is, it's at least positive, but it is no more than the true cost to the nearest goal node. In other words, H of N does not overestimate it's not pessimistic about the cost or the distance to the goal node. And here's an example. If we are here, the Pac-Man, where the agent of the, the where the agent is currently located, and we want to go here to this to eat this dot, which is the goal node, then the heuristic may estimate, okay, we are at least 15 units away because we have to go 10 units here, five units here, and this agent only moves horizontally or vertically, so it cannot go diagonally anyway. So, it, so it's at least 15 units away. Now we can see visually that it cannot get there in 15 because there are obstacles on the way. So it will have to go to the right. So it'll have the true distance will be a little bit more, but still 15 is serves as a very, very good example. So that's a good estimate in this case, a good heuristic. And because it does not overestimate it, we call it to be an admissible heuristic. So that's the definition, a heuristic H is admissible. If it is not, uh, if it does not overestimate the cost or the distance to the nearest goal node. So coming up with the admissible heuristics is what's actually involved when we want to use A star in practice. The A star algorithm is pretty much done. We have to come up with the right heuristics. So if we want to take a quick comparison of what the uniform cost search UCS does versus, versus A star, it's kind of interesting to take a look at the contours or the path that the A star does versus UCS. So when we start with the goal node here, when we, when we start with the start node here, UCS essentially searches uniformly since it does not know what is the location of the goal node. It does not have any heuristic or information to it, kind of searches evenly. And when it comes to the goal node, that's fine. That's when it records the goal node and it, see, and it stops the search. A star, on the other hand, does try to estimate that this node here seems to be closer than this node. So it gives it some sort of preferential treatment. It orders the nodes by that, by the sum of the backward cost plus the forward cost. So it looks, so it does take into account that, uh, that into account. So therefore it finds the goal node a little bit faster in, in general. And that's the beauty of the A star. Now you might wonder why does the A star search here not go directly down the down the line here because the heuristics are not perfect. So the heuristics not perfect. So in that case, it might have an estimate which might be a little higher than this node, even if it's closer. So A star's contours may look better than UCS, but of course they are not going to be perfect either. And in fact, as you can see, sometimes you can make the A star to perform, uh, the greedy search to perform very, very, very poorly and the A star does a balancing job on that. So again, if we take a look at it from this perspective, UCS expands equally, A star expands towards the goal, 
but it does try to go a little bit away as well because it really does not know where the goal is and these estimates are not going to be perfect. Okay. So the here creating heuristics is the main point of improvement. And let's try to let's try to dive into this topic on how can we find it. So most of the hard work is in coming up with these heuristics. Often, when we want to find an admissible heuristic, what we do is we relax the problem. We relax the problem and new actions are possible. For example, here we say, okay, we are simply going to go left and we are going to go vertically down here. While uh, there's an obstacle on the way here, there's another obstacle on the way here, but the new action that we are uh, we are thinking of here is that we can simply go through the obstacle, which is not possible in practice, but in in our idea of creating the heuristic, it's a helpful. In other words, we can also think that this is a relaxed problem in which there is no obstacle. So that's what the admissible heuristics are, are trying to do. Let's take another example. When we have this eight puzzle, the sliding puzzle here, and we want to put this into the right order, which is this is our goal state, this is our start state, and the action that we can have is that we can move one of the tiles to the empty tile location. So the first heuristic that we can think of is just count how many tiles are misplaced. So we can see, okay, this tile needs to be misplaced. This is misplaced, this misplaced, this is misplaced. So one needs to be here, two needs to be here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All the tiles are misplaced. So therefore, each of this node, each of this node is eight. Therefore, we can assume that we need at least eight moves to get there. Eight moves to get there because of course, each tile that's not in the right spot does need to be moved at least once. So that's how many moves we'll take. So that's the, you know, that's a good first heuristic. Now, this A star, this is this heuristic is called tiles, just to count how many tiles are you away from the uh, from you know from the goal state. And this is already significantly helpful when we are comparing this A star to UCS. So it is worth noting the results here that when the optimal path has like a four steps or eight steps or 12 steps, UCS is going to explore 3.6 million nodes while the A star algorithm with this extremely simple heuristic, it's only going to explore 227 nodes. So there's a significant saving, even with this, even with this particular, um, particular simple heuristic here. And these results are for the eight puzzle, for fifteen puzzle, twenty four puzzle. The results are a little different, but these are the results for the eight puzzle here. So already very impressive. Another heuristic to consider is that we simply take the Manhattan distance. See where is each tile. How far is it away from its target location? Where does it reside in the goal state? And we could simply take the sum of the Manhattan distance of all the tiles. And why is this admissible? Clearly this is admissible because this is how many moves that would be needed even if there was no interaction with the other slides, with the other tiles. So each tile, we simply move it to its goal state and that's how many moves it would take. So that's the that's the Manhattan uh, heuristic. And this is called A star Manhattan. And this has significant advantage over the previous, previous heuristic that we studied, which of course already has a lot of advantage compared to UCS. In fact, when you have, when you're 12 steps away from the, from the optimal path, from the goal state, the A star when using this particular heuristic, Manhattan heuristic, is only expands 73 nodes compared to 3.6 million for UCS and 227 for A star tiles. So that means that uh, having a better heuristic, A star Manhattan, uh, the Manhattan heuristic is a significant improvement over the tiles heuristic. So A star Manhattan significantly outperforms A star tiles. And here you can see that we did not change the algorithm we did not change the algorithm in the previous step as well. We we used A star, just that we changed the heuristic. Um, 
And, and here's a fun fact. If you use the heuristic to be zero, it's admissible, in which case A star acts exactly like UCS. So in, a, in other words, we can say that this UCS can also be called A star zero. A star zero, which is not a good heuristic at all, uh, it's just simply a degenerate heuristic of zero value. So we would say that that takes 112 steps, so 3.6 million steps for 12 steps away a goal state, while A star tiles, same exact A star algorithm, just a little bit, um, you know, using the tiles heuristic here, has a significant achievement improvement, and A star Manhattan has another improvement, another significant improvement over A star tiles. We can also observe that the Manhattan distance heuristic is a generalization of the tiles heuristic. In the tiles heuristic, we simply said, okay, if you're not at the target state, we count it as one, but we did not differentiate. Are you one step away, three steps away? How many moves does it need to take for this tile itself to get there? Now, here's another heuristic we could theoretically come up with. And this heuristic is to say, how about we just try to come up with the actual cost? Would it be admissible? Um, yes, it would be admissible, but this is not a really a feasible approach because it would take us a very long time to find it. That's in fact what we're trying to find in the first place. So if you are thinking about why not to use the actual cost, you can't use the actual cost because we don't have it. And to find it would kind of be doing the work, the entire work that we're doing in the first place. So with A star, we have a beautiful trade-off between the quality of the estimate and the work that we do per node. So work that we do per node is only counting this Manhattan distance, which is that if you give me this eight puzzle or 15 puzzle, 24 puzzle, that's fine. We simply have a loop uh, that goes from each cell, counts how many steps are you away and takes the sum of all of it. And that comes up with the Manhattan distance here. So A star is a beautiful trade-off between the the quality of the estimate. So it's not it's not bad, but it's not it's not it's not perfect because perfect would be using actual cost, but that would spend too much time on coming up with that perfect estimate. Rather, we want to optimize the quality of estimate work per node. So uh, which will which will will expand fewer nodes, but usually uh, you know it it's it's a good uh, good best practice overall. So one idea to keep in mind here is that if you have two or three different heuristics, you can use all of them. We not we don't have to choose one heuristic. We can simply say if we're given two heuristics or three heuristics or four, four heuristics, we can simply take the maximum of all of them. And if one heuristic is always better than, than another one, then we say, okay, then that heuristic just simply dominates the other one. And then you would simply even exclude the other one and save yourself some computation. But you could have five heuristics and some places one heuristic is better, some places the other heuristic is better. Simply take the maximum of all heuristics because recall that each heuristic, because it's admissible, therefore each heuristic does not overestimate the distance to the, to the goal node. That means H of N is less than or equal to eight star N for all the heuristics. So therefore simply take the max. The max will also be less than or equal to eight star. So max will also be, be admissible. So, so, so in that way, we can actually use multiple heuristics and we call this the lattice of heuristics is to say, we'll simply take the maximum one. Now maximum one will be smaller than the exact, the eight star and depending on which one is higher, that'll become the max. And of course, they're all greater than or equal to zero, which is our, our bottom of the lattice here. And like we said, using zero as the heuristic essentially makes the A star work like UCS. Not very well, but you can say that you're using A star. Um, now, if we want to go to larger puzzles, like eight puzzle, 15, eight puzzle, small one, 15 is a small one. Once we start going to 24 puzzle, it is still difficult. So if you are using A star or ID A star, which we have studied in the past, and we are using Manhattan distance, it is still not, 
it's still not easy to solve. So you still spend a long time. And one of the reasons is that Manhattan distance does not take into account linear conflict. For example, here, three and one. Now one goes here, two goes here, three goes here. So Manhattan distance thinks that you are three steps away because one will go here, three will go here. So two steps for tile one, one step for tile three. But the problem is that you cannot actually do this in three moves because one has to make way for three. It's reversed. One and three are reversed. So therefore, one will have to go down at some point of time. Three will have to slide to the right and one will have to come back up, right? So for that reason, that means we should be able to add two to the Manhattan heuristic. Manhattan distance is four, but the tiles, they interfere with each other. So additional vertical moves need to be added to the Manhattan distance. So in this case, the, the Manhattan distance, adjusted Manhattan distance would become six. So that way you can actually keep expanding, keep improving the heuristics, and this will give you better and better results. Sometimes, even after doing all of that, you still uh, it's still taking too long. Your algorithm is still taking a long time. Therefore, what we can do is we can use an end game or a pattern database. So essentially, we try to see for how many uh, the end results here, which are almost solved, and we can try to create a pattern database. Uh, in fact, the seven the seven tile pattern database for the fifteen puzzle contains millions, half a billion entries there. But this is a little bit of an engineering that you can use to make it uh, make it go a little bit better there. So you can use all of these concepts together. But the main idea here is that you we're using A star, which we know uses backward cost and the forward cost. And the idea there is that we will basically use, come up with new heuristics, admissible heuristics, which will be using the relaxed problems. And that's what we find here. So we have just wrapped up the informed search here. And in some sense, we can say that we found the, uh, the direction in life. That's all we have for today. So keep learning.